So you want to hear a joke about potassium. Okay. Anyway, straight into it. Uh, this would obviously be the uh, second section of the Paper 3 exam you did in 2019. And this is obviously the prep for the 2020 exam group. So straight away, the exam board isn't giving you any favours. It's going straight in and asking for the title of your physical fieldwork inquiry. You've got to know this, otherwise you can't write it, and that therefore means you can't answer the questions that follow. So you need to get into your heads this title. Don't get me wrong, if you get it ever so slightly out, then it, it, that doesn't matter. But you have to remember that your physical geography title is regarding Dawlish Warren and coastal management. If you wrote the title as Coastal Management at Dawlish Warren, actually that would be fine. But if you can try and get the word evaluate in there, that would be uh, really useful because it gives you more to talk about on a six or nine marker. We're going to start with a two marker. Suggest, which means uh, come up with something. One set of data you collected, so only one. Uh, let's come up with something. Physical field inquiry, obviously the coast one, the one at Dawlish Warren, may not have been accurate. Remember, accurate means being as close to being correct as possible. It's a two mark question, but it's only asking you for one set of data. That means the alarm bells need to go off that you're going to make a point and add a so what statement. There you go, a point and a so what. So you did three um, uh, data collection methods at Dawlish One. You did groin heights, uh, a bipolar of the sea defences, and uh, the pebble size analysis. So really, really, really straightforward two marks. We did a groin height measurement. However, the uh, uh, tape measure was not straight. One mark, so inaccurate heights measured two marks. Groin height measurement, you only did one measurement. You didn't take an average, so you could have got anomalous data. The bipolar defenses is only opinion. It's only subjective. It could be biased. It could be inaccurate. And the pebble size analysis, you only did a very small amount of pebbles, so it wasn't representative, of, uh, representative, I should say, of the entire site. Now that could be a question regarding your human fieldwork inquiry. What is really important that you do is you look at the data that you've got from the human fieldwork and make sure you can apply the same concept of giving a reason why not accurate and then the so what, what does that lead to? Question 5.2, identify means to state one potential risk a risk is something that can put you in danger in your physical geography field work and explain use that so what rule how the risk was reduced made less so you're going to get one mark here if you identify a potential risk the next two marks are going to be for your so what rule to explain how this risk was reduced on a three mark question you want to aim for that point so this means that so you get a one mark for the clear identification of a risk um, and then the following two for the explanation. So here's one the exam board wrote. They said this would be uh, acceptable. The temperature was too hot, so we applied sun cream, which meant that we were unlikely to be affected by sunburn. Three marks for writing that drivel, which a primary school kid could write. There was a risk of becoming isolated or lost. This is a, a genuine risk with the field work. It's something that we have to really safeguard against. So we all carried mobile phones. This meant we could contact the teacher if there was an emergency. Easy, easy three marks. Making it specific to your case today, the, there was a risk of slipping on rocks. So you wore appropriate football, so, footwear so you didn't fall over and injure ourselves. You actually, if you look at that last so what then, you have to actually tell the examiner the most obvious date detail there that you don't fall over and injure yourself. Two to go. Cliff face being unstable, you all wore hard hats to avoid being hit by falling rocks. I mean, I guess at this point I should point out that obviously isn't true, but the examiner doesn't know, so you can actually write anything here regarding reducing risk. The most common answer I saw in the exam was this one. One mark for falling rocks, one mark for staying 10 meters away from the cliff face, and then you get the other mark for saying, so there was less chance of being hit in the head really really straightforward uh, question but like so many of the geography questions you've got to extend your explanation to the point when you actually answer the question on to the human geography field work uh, in this example uh, from the 2019 paper there was only one six mark question they'll probably flip it around next year so the physical geography will be the six mark question 
title of the Human Geography Inquiry, just like the physical one, you need to know it. Uh, evaluate the impact of Drake Circus Shopping Centre on Plymouth. I think the original title had Vision Plymouth written in it, but the reality is that doesn't really offer any more. So uh, simply evaluate the impact of Drake Circus on Plymouth would be, would be fine. 5.3 then, what are we being asked to do? Assess, which means to judge uh, the suitability, which means is it right or appropriate? Does it work for the particular purpose in mind? of the location chosen. So you've got to talk about where you went on your human geography inquiry. Obviously that's Plymouth. It's a six mark question. So the alarm bell should be going off. It's while you're doing those weekly homeworks, you need two peels. You've got to use the figure and you've got to evidence your ideas. Now, in my opinion, these are the hardest six markers because you're being asked to make a judgment in a six mark question. You've got to tell me at some point whether or not Plymouth was the right place to go. So here is my uh, model answer. I've also just tagged in the mark scheme there in the bottom left hand corner. The yellow sections here that are highlighted, that's where you're making your evaluation. You're making your evaluation, you're showing the um, examiner your evaluative observations and actually building that detailed judgment. So let's have a little look. I mean, it's really simple, straightforward stuff. Plymouth is an hour coach drive. It means we get there quickly. It means we collect more data. So our results are more reliable and our conclusions more valid. Right. The reason you went to Plymouth is because we felt you could make uh, valid conclusions. One of the main reasons for it is this. Anytime you get asked to uh, make a judgment on your field work, it's always the underlying point is that you can make valid conclusions from it. So the fact you get there quickly meant more data, that meant your um, results should be more reliable, therefore your conclusions were more valid. Then read the yellow, you show the examiner that weighing up, that discussing on both sides. If we had chosen Truro, we'd have got there even faster, and we'd have had 30 more minutes in the field. In addition, we've got the main reason you really went to Plymouth was because there was actually a redevelopment there. It means you could study the impacts of it by looking at Upper and Lower Plymouth. Could we then collect data to create a pattern? And that would therefore mean we can generate a reasoned and informed conclusion. Again, there's your link back to the conclusion, which you're going to need on those judgment type questions. The yellow, the evaluation there, uh, distance involvement, there was a lot of time moving around rather than collecting data so actually that's a really good criticism on the grounds that if it was a smaller site like for example uh, Truro you actually might have collected more data if we look at the judgment right at the end I'll pick red for this right at the end there's our overall judgment because we were asked to assess we have made a judgment it's a tricky six marker because you have to remember to, to show arguments on both sides, but that would be six out of six all day long. Okay, then the nine marker. Um, the nine markers that we've seen so far as teachers for um, the three uh, practice exams before the um, actual exam came out in 2018, then the 2018, then the 2019 paper have all essentially revolved around the same type of question. So if we get our heads around this answer for the 2020 exam, there's a fairly good chance that what we're writing is going to repeat itself. So it's a nine mark question. We've got to think structure, but let's break it down first. To what extent means make a judgment, the data collected, what you actually went and found out on the day for one of your inquiries, very important, only pick one, don't try and do both. Did they allow you to reach valid conclusions? A valid conclusion is both a reliable and accurate conclusion. It's a nine a conclusion, sorry, yeah, the answer you've got. Now this is really important because it's asking about conclusion. You actually have to tell the examiner what the conclusion was to be able to tell him if it's valid or not. I had a lot of very good answers here that got like three or four out of nine because they mentioned lots of um, positives or negatives about the results collected, but didn't mention the conclusion, which meant simply they weren't answering the question. You know it's a nine mark question, you've got to know your structure here. You've got to be able to answer the question, making a balanced judgment at the start. 
your th uh, two peelies with a little bit of evaluation tagged on the end and then you have to conclude you have to answer the question again nine marker make sure you use your case study figures make sure you use your case study examples um, and brilliantly or really importantly for the uh, paper three the uh, the example don't know what you did so by all means um, if you're not quite sure of a figure put something in that sounds reasonable the exam board is going to give you the marks on these nine mark questions something i previously mentioned they always seem to follow the same sort of structure what you need to be aware of what you need to be able to do here is you've got to be able to um you've got to be able to link through your methods what you did into your results what you actually found out and then crucially building to a conclusion this is what you call the sequence of field work and it's really important that you understand that the method is what data or what the the plan was how you're going to collect your data what the results would therefore be of that leads to building a conclusion if there are any weaknesses in your methods then there are weaknesses in your results and therefore weaknesses in your conclusion if there are any weaknesses in your results then you can criticize your conclusions if your methods and results are both incredibly strong then you can argue that your conclusion is incredibly strong but let me tell you for your field works that won't be a risk because your methods and results are not great so let's have a little look here and then back to the question intro you've got to make a judgment overall despite some clear patterns being shown in our results and they were I do not feel the data collected does lead to valid conclusions. Now, you might notice at this point, I haven't actually put which field work we're doing because that introduction works for both. Both of your case studies can be summed up like that. So let's have a little look. We're going to do the Drake Circus um, shopping centre, your human field work. This is your two peels that I've, um, I've tried to write, one for each method. So we start with the pedestrian count on the left hand side. We've got a clear identification of what data you collected. It was the pedestrian count. We've got some clear evidence in there. We've got our uh, what the results were three times more people in Upper Plymouth than Lower Plymouth. I don't know if that was actually the data that it showed at all, but um, the example would definitely accept that. Allowing us to conclude, there's your keyword, we're allowing us to conclude that Drake Circus was pulling people to Upper Plymouth and away from Lower Plymouth. That's your conclusion. You're concluding that Drake Circus is pulling people away from Lower Plymouth. You could also say there it's the social impact there. It's having a social impact in Plymouth. Despite that clear pattern though, I don't think that is an accurate or reliable conclusion because we assumed all the pedestrians were shoppers and you know that wasn't true. The big point at the bottom here, and this really, really is top draw at GCSE level, is if you can say what that meant for your conclusion. It meant we were overstating the impact of Drake Circus. Can't stress that enough. Really, really, really positive um, point to put in there because it really shows your evaluation. The next one, uh, the void count, quite a similar uh, layout. It's always the P leads, isn't it? Uh, despite this clear pattern and accurate date, I don't believe this is an accurate or reliable conclusion because of a variety of possible causes, not just Jake Circus, for closures. There's our linking back to the question. Is our conclusion valid? Probably not. In addition, we've got an additional point here regarding the accuracy of our data being pulled into question. Look at the last point I'm making. It's answering the question our void count did not lead to valid conclusions if i'm the examiner and i'm marking this answer i'm simply getting to these points that are highlighted in red and saying this candidate is answering the question in addition i've also done the third um data collection uh, there's the third data collection there the environmental quality score and again you'll see our conclusion at the end there which is actually linking back to the question we may be overstating the impact of Drake Circus in Plymouth. Your overall conclusion, the last thing you'll write going in the green box, overall I think the data is accurate but does not build valid conclusions due to the number of assumptions made, meaning we are probably overstating the impact of Drake Circus. 
hopefully that video will make sense that model answer there i'm going to provide that to you in class but it's really 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 important that if we do get this question regarding how accurate were your conclusions you try and say the reason why your conclusions weren't valid that's at the real real top level anything you're not sure of come and see us down in h7